KFC is world's largest fried chicken fast food chain, with over 10,000 restaurants worldwide. The KFC logo, designed with the image of Colonel Harlan Sanders, has become one of the most outstanding and easily recognizable brands globally. The founder and tireless pioneer of this KFC fast food restaurant can be considered one of the most familiar American figures since President Abraham Lincoln. In 1890, Colonel Sanders was born in a small village in Indiana, USA. At the age of five, his father suddenly passed away, leaving behind no property, and his mother and three children struggled to make ends meet. To survive, his mother had to take on various odd jobs, bringing home live chicken during the day to cook and peeling potatoes for a food factory. At night, she continued to sew clothes for others, leaving little time to care for her young children. Colonel Sanders, being the eldest, took on responsibility of caring for his siblings and sharing the burden with his mother. During the day when his mother was away, young Sanders had to cook for himself. Over the course of a year, he managed to learn how to prepare 20 different dishes, becoming a renowned culinary expert in the area. At the age of 12, with his mother working and Colonel Sanders taking care of the family, their financial situation improved. However, his relationship with his stepfather was strained, and stepfather frequently beat him when his mother was not home. During this extremely difficult life for a period of two years, Colonel Sanders decided to stop attending school after completing the sixth grade at the age of 14. He opted to work and saw the change in the environment. He worked on a farm, but it was unsatisfying. He also worked as a streetcar ticket seller, which did not find him joy. At the age of 16, he lied about his age to enlist in the military. But military life did not suit him. After completing a year of service, he went to Alabama and opened a blacksmith shop, which soon closed down. Subsequently, Colonel Sanders worked as a locomotive fireman for the Southern Railway Company and got married at 18. Just a few months later, on the same day he learned that his wife was pregnant, he was laid off. As Colonel Sanders searched for work, his wife sold all their possessions and returned to her parents. At 20, he worked as an electrician, operated a ferry, and later became a railroad worker. He held various jobs, but none were smooth sailing. Then the Great Depression began, but Colonel Sanders did not give up despite his constant failures. During this time, he studied law through correspondence, obtained a correspondence law degree, and briefly served as a justice of peace in Little Rock, Kansas. However, due to financial constraints, he had to give up this position. At 30, he worked in sales for an insurance company. He later resigned due to issues with bonuses and a falling out with his boss. People told him to accept his fate and that he would never succeed. However, he wasn't ready to give up so easily. At 31, Colonel Sanders taught himself law and, encouraged by friends, started a career as a lawyer. However, during a trial, he unexpectedly got into a physical alteration with one of the parties involved in the courtroom. As a result, at the age of 32, Colonel Sanders found himself unemployed again. Life became extremely challenging. In a year, he turned 35, working as a tire salesman. Colonel Sanders experienced a near-death incident. While driving across a bridge, the bridge collapsed, causing him and his car to plunge into a river resulting in severe injuries. Despite this, he joked that it seemed that he could no longer work in tire cells, stating that adversity brings blessings. However, in the following years, despite maintaining an optimistic outlook, Colonel Sanders still had nothing. His last job was an operator at a gas service station, but the income was meager, prompting him to look for additional sources of income. It was this thought that paved the way for the future KFC fast food empire. At the age of 40, Colonel Sanders arrived in Kentucky and opened a gas station. The United States was then undergoing a period of industrial boom, with numerous highways being constructed. Cars had become a standard possession for Americans, but long distance travel posed a significant problem. People couldn't find proper meals on the road. Colonel Sanders, realizing his culinary skills, decided to open a roadside eatery, selling food he prepared himself. Surprisingly, the business flourished, growing larger over time. To maintain the taste, he invented many exclusive recipes. However, he encountered a problem. The speed of frying chicken was too slow, and customers couldn't wait. He purchased the pressure fryer, reducing the frying time to 8 minutes. His restaurant quickly became popular through Kentucky, evolving into a larger establishment with 142 seats and a parking lot. By 1935, Colonel Sanders' fried chicken had gained widespread fame. In recognition of his significant contribution to the state's cuisine, Governor Ruby LaFoon officially awarded him the honorary title of Colonel Sanders of Kentucky. Hence, people affectionately call him Colonel Sanders. Yet, fate did not favor him entirely. In 1939, World War II erupted, dealing a severe blow to the then 49-year-old Colonel Sanders. Government implemented oil rationing, forcing the closure of Colonel Sanders' gas station. Consequently, he dedicated himself fully to running the fried chicken business, borrowing a substantial sum from the bank to expand the restaurant. Unfortunately, just as he invested all his funds into expansion, a high-speed highway development plan was introduced. The highway conveniently passed through the middle of his restaurant, forcing it to close its doors. This sudden change thrust Colonel Sanders into the abyss. 
His entire investment evaporated in an instant, and to repay debts, he even depleted all his bank savings. The once respected colonel found himself transformed into a penniless individual. At the age of 60, he could only rely on a monthly relief payment of $105. However, Colonel Sanders was not willing to end his life like this, especially considering that a meager relief payment couldn't sustain his livelihood. Everything depended on himself. Colonel Sanders pondered deeply on how to escape this predicament. The most valuable asset he possessed was his fried chicken, a significant intangible asset. Suddenly, he recalled selling the fried chicken recipe to a restaurant owner in Utah. Following suit, several other restaurant owners bought Colonel Sanders fried chicken seasoning, paying him $5 per chicken worth of seasoning. In the midst of adversity, Colonel Sanders thought that perhaps others could do the same, and this might be the new starting point of his career. And so, Colonel Sanders embarked on his second entrepreneurial venture. Armed with a pressure cooker and a 50-pound bucket of seasoning, he hit the road in his old Ford, wearing a white suit, a black bow tie, and the overall attire of a southern gentleman. The white-haired Colonel Sanders would stop at the entrance of each restaurant, from Kentucky to Ohio, selling his fried chicken secret recipe. He requested that owner and staff taste the chicken, if they liked it, he would sell it to them, provide the franchise rights along with the seasoning, and teach them the method of frying chicken. Initially, no one believed in him. Was the restaurant owner even thinking that listening to this strange old man was a waste of time? Colonel Sanders faced immense difficulty in his promotional efforts, facing rejection a thousand and nine times over two years. Finally, on the a thousand and tenth attempt at a restaurant, he received a positive response, and from there, he gained momentum. In 1952, the first authorized KFC restaurant was established in Salt Lake City, marking the beginning of franchise operation in the world of food services. Surprisingly, the KFC restaurant business grew rapidly, like a snowball rolling downhill. Within a short span of five years, Colonel Sanders had developed 400 chain stores in the United States and Canada. In 1955, Colonel Sanders KFC Corporation was officially established. Simultaneously, he accepted an invitation from a Colorado television show. Being busy with work, he found the only neat suit he had, a white palm suit, and wearing his black frame glasses, the seasoned southern colonel, demonstrated the preparation of fried chicken. The image of fried chicken quickly attracted numerous journalists and television hosts. The nearly 70-year-old Colonel Sanders was surrounded by people clamoring to collaborate with him, and the restaurant representatives eager to purchase franchise rights flocked to him. In response, he established a school, allowing these restaurant owners to come and learn how to operate a franchise fried chicken restaurant under the KFC brand. In 1964, an investment group led by a young 29-year-old lawyer, John Brown, and a 60-year-old capitalist, Jack Massey, was deeply impressed by Colonel Sanders' business. They wanted to buy the business for $2 million. At the time, this was a considerable amount. Though Colonel Sanders was initially reluctant, considering he was already 74 years old, he eventually agreed to pass the business to the next generation. In 1968, Brown and Massey, spending several million dollars, heavily advertised Colonel Sanders and KFC fast food restaurants. The annual sales totaled a surprising $700 million. Three years later, with Colonel Sanders' consent, Brown and Massey sold this potentially boundless business to Hopline, a food and beverage company. This time, Brown received $35 million in cash and stock, slightly more than what Massey received. According to available information, from 1966 to 1971, over the span of eight years, at least 125 restaurant employees and commission salespeople who owned KFC stocks became millionaires. The beneficiaries included corporate staff as well as diligent workers who earnestly served the company. Although KFC underwent changes in ownership later on, the franchise model remained unchanged. Colonel Sanders' iconic image, dressed in an all-white suit, sporting a head full of white hair and donning black frame glasses, forever exuding a smiling demeanor, remains etched in memory. Despite selling all proprietary rights, given his immense reputation, the new owners specifically paid Colonel Sanders a lifelong salary to continue serving as the spokesperson for KFC. Engaging in extensive promotional activities, he continued to travel up to 250,000 miles annually, tirelessly promoting KFC fried chicken. His age and wealth did not diminish his enthusiasm for work. He continued to diligently manage his business. When asked why he continued to work so diligently, Colonel Sanders responded, more people rust out than wear out due to idleness. If I had rusted out due to idleness, I would be in hell. Unfortunately, Colonel Sanders passed away in December 1980 at the age of 90, succumbing to leukemia. His story teaches us that, in the face of setbacks in life, as long as one does not give up, life can become beautiful.